Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look at important issues and how we can work together to more effectively minister. Today, we have Clint Morgan, who is the General Director of International Missions. He has been in that position since 2011. He also served as a missionary from 1976 to 2005 in Ivory Coast. He initiated and established a Bible Institute there and worked as the director of the Hannah Project uh, in 2010. So he's had a lot of organizational experience, a lot of missionary experience, and it's so good to have you here with us today, uh, Brother Clint. Thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to participate in this. Well, we know that back, I think, in 2014, I am conducted a SWOT analysis. And so a SWOT analysis is something we're actually in the process of doing as a denomination right now. And we're thinking about assessment in our churches and different Christian organizations. And so from time to time, people will say, well, you need to do a SWOT analysis. So tell us a bit about what is a SWOT analysis? The SWOT analysis was developed in the 1960s by a man named Albert S. Humphrey. Uh, If properly done, though, I think we can say it can serve two specific purposes. One is provide us with a very simple and quick analysis of our agency, Mm -hmm. and two is to give us an in-depth look into our agency and serve as the starting point for developing short- and long-term strategies. So it really just gives you a good view of where you are and where you what. What can lie ahead for you? Mm-hmm. So that's what you all did at IM, and that's what we're doing now as a denomination. And so it's helpful for you're in a church out there to stop and just think for a bit. What are our strengths? What are mm-hmm. the weaknesses that we have? Uh, what are the opportunities we have as a church? And then what are the particular threats to our church? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good to think about those kinds of things, isn't it? Yep. And I think, you know, when I first time I heard SWOT analysis, I'm thinking SWAT team. Okay, yes. you know, we're going to go in and take over something. But it really is just a good tool, instrument for us to sit back and think through very carefully, mm-hmm. you know, these four things that you just meant and mentioned, what are our strengths and what are our weaknesses, which we don't like to talk about, mm-hmm. but what are the opportunities out there and uh, and what are the threats? And we understand that all of these uh, can be internal and external. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just not just uh, exactly what's happening right here in this office or any particular place. It, it really is uh, uh, everything that's affecting. World, world events can also yes. come into play also. So Good. we have to take those things into consideration. So let's, let's walk through that for a bit. The first, uh, the S, is strengths. Mm-hmm. And so we think about what are the attitudes, what are the actions, the different activities and so forth that we have, Mm -hmm. maybe some of the resources and skills and uh, core values and competencies. I know you all did this um, with IM, Mm -hmm. and you you looked at the strengths. Do you remember some of the strengths there that you all came up with? Yeah, when we went, uh, when we did it for our agency, we did it first of all with our our leadership, our mm-hmm. directors within the office, and then also we invited our board, which we felt like was very important. And then we did a compilation of what we actually came up with, and a couple of the strengths. On you know, we have seven that we actually identified. I'll just give you a couple if you want more to be fine. But our great commission efforts of national churches through mission conferences and missionary teams, Bible Institute training, we felt like was very good. Confidence and trust and leadership of the department, you know, those things are, are if you have those, those really are strengths for an organization. I, there was one more that I really liked, the servant spirit demonstrated by our leaders. Yes. You know, these are things that are very important yes. to us. Yeah. Very good. So let's say I'm a pastor, I'm a deacon, or just a so-called regular person, if there is such in a mm-hmm. church out there, mm-hmm. we might sit down and look and say, first off, we look maybe as a staff and then maybe as deacons, then other lay people and maybe even use some people in the community, but they're just asking, what are the strengths of our churches? And so mm-hmm. we might find some similar things like you mentioned that the church is very concerned about the Great Commission, about reaching the neighborhood and about reaching others. Uh, we might find things like uh, a parallel for a servant's attitude would be people are a lot of volunteers in our church, maybe a lot of giving in our church. Um, 
but that's what we would want to do. Sit down with those different groups, different constituencies, if you will, and just kind of go through and brainstorm what are our strengths as a church, just like you did uh, for I am, what are the strengths of I am, and so forth. I think, uh, can I interject mm-hmm. here? I think uh, it, it can you can really advance it by asking questions. Mm. And I'm not giving you the questions, you know, that, but for example, we asked, you know, what do we hear people say about us? Yes. You know, and that, that you understand can be one of the strengths because they look at you in a positive manner. And what do we offer our denomination that makes us a valued entity uh-huh. for the larger structure or for the, for the denomination as a whole? What are we offering that other departments aren't? It's not competition. It's just that, you know, what is our, our uniqueness. U- uniqueness there? And what are the outstanding characteristics of our field personnel, for example, we usually generally get good feedback about our missionaries, Mm -hmm. but we also want them to feel that way about the office staff and everyone else. So I think a good starting point for any of these Mm -hmm. is prepare yourself some questions Mm -hmm. that you're wanting to address uh, and then, you know, let that let that flow and generally find once you start answering those questions, more questions comes and really broadens the perspective. It helps. Mm -hmm. So just in regular church, what do you guys hear people say about us? And then going out a bit in the community, different uh, restaurants and so forth close by, uh, what is it that makes your church uh, different from other churches Mm -hmm. that are around? That would be similar to what you all did with your particular agency Mm -hmm. with I Am. Um, And then what are some outstanding characteristics? What is it that people remember about our particular church? And think about it and so forth. And sometimes, you know, uh, it's good to get people who've been in a long time, in church a long time, I would think, and those who just knew. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think as we did it, we're also talking with our missionaries, and you you find out how do the older ones feel, how do the new ones feel. And there's a lot of studies about, you know, shifts of the way people perceive an organization. Mm -hmm. You know, the longer they stay, you know, they start off very often very enthusiastic, and then there'll be that waning period, and the longer they stay, it seems to actually increase, you know, mm-hmm. uh, as they go on. So if you have those that are at the beginning stage and those are at the end stage, that is really a strength for your organization. You have people that are really enthusiastic about your your a- agency and what you're doing, and you can yes. see that with your with the church staff. Yes. You know? So those things. I mean, new I think there's a great parallels and, yes. in what's going on. Yeah, new people and people that have been around for yeah. a while, and yeah. even some folks that might have left, or uh, even some folks that have never come or maybe visited a couple of times. Just getting a, a really, really good yeah. picture. I had uh, heard a guy speak about one time and, and evaluating a, a mission agency, uh-huh. and he said, "If you want to know about an agency, ask them to give you the name of the five of at least five the people who left recently." And ask them why did they leave? Now that's scary, yes. you know. That's opening up yourself up, but I think it's a really, really good idea. Yes, you know? and it it may take us to the next area yep. that we want to assess <laughs> our weaknesses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, tell us a bit about what we're looking for when we say weaknesses of an organization or yeah. church. These are factors or, or things that can uh, reduce or hinder our capacity to accomplish our mission statement. Um, then they. They can be in any area. It can be in personnel. It can mm-hmm. be in resources. You know, you can just go across there. Uh, candidate processing for us, decision making process in a church, you know, would be very, very important. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think we'll we'll be careful where we go with the weaknesses. But yes. they sometimes they're glaring and sometimes they're not. So it's it's better to probe mm-hmm. a little, you know, and and be willing to ask yourself what is actually hindering us from accomplishing what we're all about. It, Again, we started with questions. Uh, is our mission statement clear, and mm-hmm. is it realistic? What we say we're all about, are we really all about it? Right. You know, and what we're doing, is it getting us there? Or, or we could say, well, we're very busy, but are we doing things that are profitable and move us in the right direction? Do we have the personnel? Mm-hmm. Do we have the materials? Do we have the resources necessary? You know, are we financially stable? Are we spiritually stable for a church? You know, are you emotionally stable? And you hope you're getting positives here, but yes. sometimes in asking those questions, you go, really, you know, you might. It's not about digging up your trash. It is right. really about a very realistic approach and look at yourself and your church and your organization and say, all right, what is hindering us? Mm-hmm. And if you can if you identify it, you can address it much, much better. Better not sweep it under the rug or yes. stick your head in the sand, as we say, but uh, so definitely this is, deal with it. This is hard. This is difficult. Mm-hmm. And 
but it does require seriously looking at a situation. It's almost like going to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't want to be 30 pounds overweight and just say, oh, everything's fine. It's not going to improve. So we want to look, what are, where are we really at? What are our real weaknesses? And so it takes some honesty here, yeah. but we may have some financial difficulties. We may have difficulties with unity. You mentioned there uh, maybe a difference in mission. So we might have become inward focused and we say we're about the Great Commission or reaching our community, but really it's about us a little bit. Uh, so we want to really examine that, see what kinds of weaknesses we really have, uh, and again, getting those from the different constituent groups as and well. None of us, none of us like to face those. Uh-huh. But it, as a mission, we saw a couple. We diminished financial support at that particular time when we did it in 2014. Over a period of uh, about six years, there we lost probably 7.2 million mm. in income. You know, and we had to ask ourselves very frankly, what happened there? Why mm-hmm. did you lose that kind of money? We realized then, you know, and this was, we had relationship difficulties. We were not really given that time and energy we needed. It wasn't because we don't want to have good relationships. Right. But if people are suspicious, suspicious of you or, you know, they're not going to engage with mm-hmm. you. And, you know, that that's what we're talking about, those factors that can actually mm-hmm. hinder you from getting where you want to go. We had a lot of... Uh, red tape and getting money mm. passing through those kind of things mm-hmm. and then you know in reality we look at a long term uh, i want to say a strategic it's just a lack of knowledge of our mission's history right you know right. people not knowing if you don't know where we came from if we don't know some of our pop willie stories and yes. you know uh, yes. brother carlisle <laughs> and others then it, we, we get, it, it's weakness yeah. it really is and it, is it lack of pride is it lack of abilities lack of resources mm-hmm. that so we have to ask ourselves some really tough questions there. and so for mm-hmm. us in the church it might be the percentage of tithers it might be uh, the giving is not what it once was it might be mm-hmm. how difficult it is to get into the church to become acclimated to it become part of the ministry team and so forth uh, but we're really looking where are we at as far as weaknesses and mm-hmm. then we switch gears and we start looking Positive. at opportunities mm-hmm. so tell us a bit about that and these are when we talk about opportunities we're talking about favorable favorable conditions mm-hmm. trends strategic moves or you know per, perhaps even uh, uh, untapped resources or unta- untapped avenues of action that help uh, strengthen our program and activities and, and the things we try to do that lead. And we all are, we really are all, all about our mission statement. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about these opportunities, what, what is it that we might be missing that if we engage and we take, take these things and we work on them, that it will help us to realize and to accomplish our mission statement? Mm-hmm. Good. So it could be the sometimes it's the changing demographics within a neighborhood. It could be mm-hmm. uh, we're close to a college. It could be uh, involvement of colleges, though, close to us and how mm-hmm. we could get uh, reach out to those. But what are the opportunities that, uh, in your case, you were looking at an organization. Mm-hmm. In our cases, we're looking at our particular churches. Uh, what are the opportunities that we have that we can take advantage of? And mm-hmm. you've mentioned earlier internal versus external. It could be the skill set or the gifts that people have that God has sent our way. It could be some of the things that are happening in the nation, in our environment, uh, an election. It could be uh, uh, that some a financial downturn even that points people often back toward the Lord. But what are those opportunities Mm -hmm. that we have? We looked at, and and, in ours, we came up with things like reaching the areas of the world through non-American believers, Mm. um, national believers. And man, we, you know, when we really locked in on that opportunity, we said, you know, we made it one of our strategic objectives is to form more international teams. Mm -hmm. You know, and at that particular time, I think we had maybe two foreign-born Missionaries. Mm-hmm. Now we have twelve. Yeah, you know. So we we realize this is a great opportunity. We're going to really pursue this. You know, forming partnerships. We had a few partnerships, but you know, our mission statement says we exist to labor with the body of Christ. If mm-hmm. we're going to do that, then 
who is included in the body of Christ? Every born-again believer. Now, primarily we know we're free will Baptists. We focus on our free will Baptist people. But we have a lot of free will Baptists that are involved in international missions that are not with us. They're not our enemies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, they're our brothers and sisters. And, mm-hmm. you know, we have a very strong commitment. We're not going to fight kingdom people. Yes. And so we want to seek that as an opportunity to form partnerships. And right now I think we have this 11 or 12 partnerships Uh because we saw this as an opportunity if we're going to stay true to our mission statement let's seize these opportunities and move things in the right uh directed direction uh just several things so like that and and as you're thinking down at the end you say our ultimate goal is the so you know achieving this mission statement Mm -hmm. and are these things moving us in that direction and there may be opportunities you say well i would really like to do that it's not what you'd really like to do yeah, you understand what yes. I'm saying? It's really what do we really need to do? What yes. should we be doing? And those are the opportunities you want to seize. So it sounds like maybe we have to think outside the box a little bit, a little bit different than we've thought yeah. in the past. Uh, some things that we might feel threatened by, we may see, hey, how could this be an opportunity? The mm-hmm. Lord is at work. The Lord knows all things and think about the Great Commission. And so uh, it could even be a new church start in our area and thinking of how we might be able to work with them, uh, a new neighborhood coming along, a new school and uh, any number of things. But how might the Lord be working in this to make it an opportunity for in your case, organization, in our mm-hmm. case, is our churches to help us fulfill it, the Great Commission. Would it be fair, and you know, you have to be careful. We don't want to tread in someone else's territory. Mm-hmm. But, the, you know, we talk about opportunities and we talk about demographic shifts mm-hmm. or economic shifts right. or religious <clears throat> things. But if we go back over our history <clears throat> and we look at churches that have closed, and, you know, a lot of it is because the demographic changed in that in that community right. and they did not want to make that strategic adjustment to that demographic mm-hmm. and, and again i'm not speaking accusatory in a manner here i'm just saying as we reflect on this let's say this was really an opportunity mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. as we look at especially on a on a global scale we you know we have to look at that the mm-hmm. shifting and right now we have a clear picture of it uh with a number of uh, immigrants and refugees here in the United States, you know, 43 million foreign-born people in mm-hmm. the States right now. Is that an opportunity or is it a threat? Right, you know? right. We look at it as an opportunity. Right. You know, I mean, and and it depends on your perspective of that. If you mm-hmm. look at it as a threat, you certainly aren't going to respond to it in a positive manner. Right. So when you look at opportunities, it does take those things in. And missiological trends, which we like to talk about in our world, but they really are based on a lot of it is demographics, economics, and those mm-hmm. kind of things. And for local churches, I think it's true also. You know, what are the what are the trends that are going on in your community, mm-hmm. and how can you seize those as opportunities? Not there are some things we absolutely have we cannot be involved in. We understand that. You mentioned earlier talking about outside out of the box, mm-hmm. and. Uh, someone asked me recently, you know, why do you always talk about being out of the box? What's wrong with the box? I said, there's nothing wrong with the box. If we look at the box as the church, you know, mm-hmm. but here's the reason we say we want to think outside the box because that's where non believers are. Mm-hmm. They're outside of that box. Right. You know, uh, I like to use a military uh, example of a FOB, a forward operating base. My son's in the military, uh-huh. you know, and they have that place where they go for rest and restoration. Mm. You know, and they're protected. Mm -hmm. It's not they can't be attacked, but not likely they're going to be attacked there. Mm -hmm. But once they walk outside that gate, they're back in enemy territory. They're back in the battle again. And they may not be shooting bullets and, you know, launching missiles every time, Mm -hmm. but they're back in the battlefield. Yeah. And so that's what I want to say is, you know, what what are those opportunities? But and it does mean thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. If we're going to look out there, we're going to look out beyond our four walls and say, what is going on in this community that says, Mm -hmm. Uh, come and get it you know this is your opportunity so it sounds like uh, agency in your case churches and in many of our Mm -hmm. cases really need to spend some time here what are the opportunities that we have and uh, maybe in the past where some churches have seen the neighborhood shift and have moved somewhere else maybe we should say well you know the lord's put us here why are we here at this particular point in history at this particular point mm-hmm. in time so what is it that the lord would have us to do right now if we're we're thinking about the great commission acts 1 8 uh, 
the, the world's coming to us. So what can we do? So really think about that particular area. Wouldn't you love to sit around with uh, churches and have this discussion, though? I mean, yes. What yes. an amazing thing if you can get our our people. And I believe that there are a mm-hmm. lot of people that if the discussion was actually started, mm-hmm. they would get engaged. Yes. And uh, so I, I appreciate it's, you leading this way of getting our pastors and and thinking about it as an agency, but we know it's going to pass down to our churches also. And we think every church needs to really do this, Mm -hmm. think about Mm -hmm. themselves. So the last one is threats. So what are the threats that we encounter? So talk a bit about uh, threats in the SWOT analysis. And and then this is threats are the factors that can directly or indirectly have a negative effect on your programs, your personnel, your activity, your actions. And again, they can be external, they can be internal, Mm -hmm. you know. There are uh, times there are uh, identifiable trends that are negative toward the church, Mm -hmm. and we are facing those right here in America. Mm -hmm. Right now we know that. And so I would say a total keen awareness of uh, government actions and and movements that are anti-church, anti-religion, we need those those are threats. And so we can identify them. And then if there are things happening within the the denomination, and we've had – our moments, mm-hmm. let's be honest, we've had mm-hmm. our moments as a denomination that it was unfavorable. I mean, it's just not good. Uh, organizational environment, I, I believe with all my heart we are at a, a wonderful, beautiful spot as Free Will Baptist mm-hmm. right now. I do, mm-hmm. and I praise the Lord for that. But that doesn't mean there are not threats out mm-hmm. there, and how mm-hmm. do we identify them? You know, we looked at, you know, we asked a couple of questions. We asked us, what's the number one factor? that would cause I am to be hindered in accomplishing its mission statement. What, is there anything that could happen that could actually bring us to a screeching halt? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, when you depend on resources as we do as an agency, that makes a lot of difference. And we yes. know that there's a world crisis, financial crisis, charitable giving, the number one that goes out the window, you know, mm-hmm. people stop giving, charitable giving. So we realize that. But what is it for a local church? Mm-hmm. What are those threats within the community or within the government or within the church itself. And I think that, you know, that's a, a very important part. To That's why I said it can be internal right, uh, right. issues. So having, you know, uh, competitive programs in the community, we see that, those kind of things. But sometimes we need to be careful, especially if it's another church, to not look at it as competition. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, just the good things happening over there may not be happening here. So yes. that's not a threat. <laughs> no. So, but in a church, you think about, you talked about internal and external threats. Mm-hmm. And so with internal threats, it could be a lack of unity. It could be uh, folks um, seeing, like having particular agendas and so forth. Mm-hmm. External it can be the bigger ones like maybe losing tax exempt status or the economy, some of the same ones you mentioned with I am. Um, but in a SWOT analysis, we want to just be honest with these are the threats. These are the things that are that can create difficulty for our church and be aware of them and then think about ways we can mitigate or how we can reduce the harm those threats can cause. Absolutely. And the SWOT analysis is a great thing as a tool and an instrument to help us give an assessment, you know, of our agency or our church. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, they're not worth the paper it's written on. If you don't do something, if you don't mm-hmm. follow up and you don't take it, build on your strength, address your weaknesses, seize your opportunities, and you know address those threats. Okay. I mean, yeah. So let's talk about that for a little bit. And really, in the business world, they would call this strategic planning. Mm-hmm. People would say, well, what's they have to do with what we're doing? And just remember... Jesus talked about planning if you're going to build a tower and so forth. And so you do see this throughout the scripture. You might say Acts 1.8 is a strategic plan as well. And so what you're saying is you look at the strengths that you have. You try to capitalize on those. You look at the weaknesses. You try to address what you can. Uh, You look at the opportunities and ways, maybe goals, that you might take advantage of those. And then ways to reduce the threats. And it sounds like we would have a plan with short-term and long-term goals that we come down to a church. And we're really kind of summing it up pretty quick here. But we set those goals, and then we begin to work on something. 
week after week uh, that we're moving toward those particular goals. And then we would see, you know, we would hope to be in a different place within a year from now and then a much different place five years from now. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much the way it works, isn't it? It is. And, and, and again, long-term and short-term strategies mm-hmm. because some of those, all of these things can have a short-term or in the long-term, you know, uh, a perspective to them and being willing to sit down and, you know, with your leadership and plan mm-hmm. and move forward. But this is a great tool. I want to tell you, I believe this is a great tool if used properly. Well, we really appreciate you coming in and talking to us about it today. And so we also encourage you all that are out there that may be uh, looking at doing a SWOT analysis, contact us at questions at nafwb.org, and we'll help you as you uh, try to engage in this process and uh, try to partner with you and work with you, providing some tools with you as you go along there in your church. Thank you, my friend, for being with us today. Thank you. Great.